activity-based costing. So, activity-based costing deals with the mechanism of charging overheads to activities utilized in the production of goods or services. The traditional method of costing apportioned overheads based on a single driver termed absorption rate. So, the absorption rate could be labor hour or the production unit. Now, with the activity-based costing, also known as the ABC, the production activities are firstly identified. So, activities could be rent, it could be utilities, it could be canteen. So, the activities are what costs are incurred for. And secondly, a cost pool is to be established. Now, a cost pool is the accumulation of all costs related to the activity. Thirdly, a cost driver is to be determined. A cost driver is what influences the activity to incur the expenses or the costs that are pulled. Example, factory space will be a cost driver for warehouses rent. Production or machine hours will determine the amount of utilities. The number of staff that a canteen feeds will determine the amount of expenses or costs that they incur. The cost driver will be used to allocate the overheads, that is the costs that are pulled to the various products using those activity. So if a product stores its units in the warehouse, the space it occupied, being the cost driver, will be used to allocate a portion of the rent, that is the cost pool, to it. Then lastly, the allocated cost to the product will be absorbed onto the unit to arrive at the cost per unit. So if they are secondary or indirect cost, they must first be absorbed onto the primary cost pulled before a portion onto the product. Let's test our understanding. So a company producing wardrobes and tables have their cost as follows. Now wood and labor for wardrobes are $50,000. Wood and labor for tables are $25,000. The factory rent is $15,000. Those are overheads that has to be split. Utilities are also $10,000. Canteen, $20,000. So the total cost for the business is $120,000. So we have 500 labor hours for wardrobe, 300 labor hours for tables, a total of 800 labor hours. For square feet, it's 150 for wardrobes, 100 for tables, making a total of 250. For staff members, 25 for wardrobe, 15 for tables, 40 in total. So in solution, we'll estimate the cost for wardrobes and tables. Now for factory rent, the total cost to be absorbed is $15,000. Now wardrobe is set to be occupying 150 feet of the factory space and tables is 100. So the two of them will give you 250. So you are portion it based on the square feet. So it's 150 divided by the 250 multiplied by the 15,000 giving 9,000. For the tables will be the 100 feet that they occupy divided by the 250 multiplied by the 15,000 giving 6,000. When we move on to utilities, the total cost is 10000 The appropriate driver to use will be the labor hours because we assume that the more labor spent in working, the more utilities they incur. Wardrobe has 500 hours being spent. Table, 300. So the total will be 800. So for the wardrobe, it will be 500 divided by the total of 800 multiplied by the 10000 providing 6250 For tables, will be 300 divided by 800 multiplied by 10000 given 3750 when we come to the canteen we will use the cost driver of the number of staff the total cost of the canteen is twenty thousand dollars wardrobe has 25 members divided by the total staff of 40 multiplied by the twenty thousand will give you twelve thousand five hundred dollars tables has 15 staff divided by the total staff of 40 multiplied by the twenty thousand dollars will give you seven thousand five hundred dollars now because the other two are strictly attributed to the product we don't have to apportion them based on any cost driver so here the activity is the factory rent the utility the canteen the cost pool is the fifteen thousand the ten thousand and the twenty thousand the driver for factory rent is the space for utility is the labor hours for canteen is the number of staff let's move on to target costing target costing is the resulting cost estimate arrived by subtracting a desired profit margin from a competitive selling price. Now, this is the reverse of the conventional costing process. Now, the conventional costing process firstly establishes the cost, that is, estimates the cost of material, 
labor and overheads add a profit margin or markup to arrive at the selling price if you want to know how to calculate the markup or a margin for a product kindly click on the link to your top right now target costing is particularly essential when a new product is to be launched especially when there are competing products already trading at a particular price on the market if a product is to be successful it must conform to the benchmark price let's determine the steps involved in target costing so first you have to identify the competitive prevailing selling price for which the new product must conform to to succeed now this can be determined via cross-checking the prices of competitors or through a market research secondly after you have identified the selling price a profit margin or markup desirable for the product by the business is to be calculated and then the profit will be netted or subtracted from the benchmark selling price or the target selling price now the resulting figure will be the target cost after the target cost has been identified the actual cost of the product must be estimated to see if it will match the target cost or not now if a difference exists where the actual estimated cost is less than the target cost there wouldn't be any problem the business can proceed in manufacturing the product however if the actual estimated cost is more than the target cost then a cost gap will be created and this must be closed if the product is to be continued let's take a look at some steps in eradicating the cost gap the first is that non-essential features of the product must be eliminated so any feature like packaging or a functionality that is not critical to influence the customer's buying decision can be cut for example medicinal products are usually patronized for their effects with minimal emphasis on package sophistication so in this instance the cost of packaging can be reduced to close the gap also if customers of a particular product say phone are only interested in placing and receiving calls sending and receiving messages the phone's musical or video functionality can be stepped down secondly the profit margin can also be reviewed downwards say from 20 percent to 10 percent to push the target cost upwards to close the gap thirdly relatively cheaper material to production can be switched to however the switch must not threaten the quality of the output of the product labor can also be trained to be more efficient which will reduce idle hours or waste labor with lesser skill which comes with lower wages can also be employed or switched to and a change in the level of skill must not be wide not to result in increased wastages and machine breakdown all of which will widen the gap further instead of closing it lastly utilities can be managed to see a reduction for instance lights must be turned off when not in use or relatively cheaper warehouse rented so when we test our understanding a company is thinking of producing storybooks the average storybook on the market is sold for ten dollars the company expects to realize ten percent margin as profit we have to calculate the target cost for the storybook in solution we'll start with the target sales that is the ten dollars we then calculate the profit margin given one dollar which is the ten percent on the selling price because the selling price was provided and the margin also we just work it out straight this will give us a target cost of nine dollars so the business's cost of production of the storybooks must have a maximum amount of nine dollars 